Welcome to News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. Welcome to the West Texas View. I'm Johnny Lou Avery. And for the last several uh, pro programs, we've been having a series of programs from the doctors at the Texas Tech University Health Science Center. Dr. Melinda Morris has been here the last two Sundays. And uh, before that, she was here a couple of other weekends because we've had so much response from people who have watched these programs and they've sent in questions. They've emailed me or they've telephoned me and, and they've said, be sure and ask her this or bring her back on and ask her that. And so that's what this program is going to be about completely. Uh, we, uh, week before last, we talked about preventive medicine and she talked about how important it was to to monitor yourself and learn about yourself so that you could uh, be in charge of your own health and not have to go to the doctor too much. But then last week we talked about the essentials, uh, spark plugs and rechargers in your body and that's the vitamins and how important those were for you to understand what each vitamin does and why you're not getting enough. And so now today we're going to get to the questions that you sent in and, and uh, we're going to be talking about those. But before we do, I want to talk just a minute about what the Texas Tech Health Science Center is all about. Because when we started this program, immediately I had a flood of calls from people saying, I didn't know that they also had patient care. I thought it was just a teaching uh, facility out of the med school. Well, it has a four point purpose. It is teaching and training and, and uh, continuing education for the professionals who are already uh, in medicine. It also has a research component. And, and so that's really important. But then it has patient care. And there are six uh, uh, centers of, of the Texas Tech University Health Science Center and Midland Odessa is one of those six uh, centers. And Dr. M Morris and several of the other doctors that you've met over the last few months are from the Texas Tech University Health Science Center, which means that they teach in the School of Medicine, but they also have a clinical practice and you can ac access Dr. Morris through the number that's rolling across your screen, which is from the Jenna Welch Women's Center at, located in Midland. And um, they, uh, uh, one of the questions that came to me when you were first on was, do they accept insurance? Do they accept Medicare? And this came from a woman uh, in the uh, Monahans area, and she said, I want to uh, uh, not only c come, but I'd like to bring my mother. And so she was asking questions about that, and so I told her, and I think I gave her the right answer, but you give me that answer. Well, all the faculty are practicing physicians as well, uh -huh. and so we're, we all see patients in a clinical office setting, uh -huh. and we do accept insurances, all the major insurances, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, just like any other private office would. Uh -huh. And so when, when a person comes in, it, it's, it's no different than if uh, they had just moved here from Galveston and they had been going to a doctor in Galveston, they just... Uh, it just so happens that it happens to be in the Texas Tech uh, University Health Science Center banner across the front of the clinic. And in Midland, you know, we're right adjacent to Midland Memorial Hospital, uh -huh. main campus, uh -huh. uh, and right there on Illinois uh -huh. and N Street. And we have uh, family medicine, we have internal medicine, uh, we have behavioral medicine, and then we have obstetrics and gynecology. Uh -huh. yeah. And so approximately how many um, uh, doctors do you have there? Well, for example, in your field in obstetrics and gynecology. We, we have um, five uh, obstetric and gynecology physicians that rotate through the office uh, on a regular basis, uh -huh. on a weekly basis. Uh -huh. Um, my duties are kind of divided between two different offices. So I'm at Jenna Welsh on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays because I have other duties on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but there are doctors there every day of the week. Okay. Uh, full time, yeah. we have at least uh, two physicians uh -huh. there every day. So you might be having classes to, that you teach or you might be doing some things that research. Or I'm in research. labor and delivery delivering babies. 
<laughs> so, in other words, you make all babies be delivered on Tuesdays and yeah, Thursdays. I, I wish it worked out that way, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's usually at 12 o'clock at night, isn't it, or 2 o'clock uh, in, in the morning? 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that, that's the most common time. Well, let, let me talk to you about some of the questions that I had. One of the questions is because you talked about how important the health of a uh, mother was on her unborn child, yes. how, how important it was for the mother to take very good care of what she was eating and, and what she had eaten before she had uh, became pregnant and so on. But I had a question about the effects of alcohol smoking uh, uh, and other bad habits on not only the delivery process but the fetus and, and the health of the child after it was born. And they particularly wanted to know uh, that they had heard that most babies born with parents that were uh, alcohol drinkers uh, had low birth weight. Uh, but she said, what about the brain? What does it do to the brain and to the general health? And we may not be able to finish that question because it's a big question, but start it. Well, um, alcohol use, smoking, or drug use during pregnancy has adverse effects. And you know, we, we counsel these women to, to please stop smoking if they're, you know, if they're smoking. Um, no alcohol intake at all if possible during pregnancy. Um, there's a condition called alcohol fetal syndrome um, to, that has a combined adverse effect on the baby uh, with excess alcohol intake during the pregnancy. So it has severe uh, adverse outcomes on the baby. Mm -hmm. Now some girls will come in and go, you know, I, I, I had a couple of drinks before I even knew I was pregnant, but once I was pregnant, I haven't had any more. Um, generally, there's not going to be an issue with that, but it's the continued daily intake uh -huh. of alcohol throughout the pregnancy that's going to lead to very severe adverse outcomes on the infant. Uh -huh. Or they'll say, I drink it very moderation. I only drink a couple of glasses of wine bef uh, with dinner or something like that. But really, any amount is not good. Yeah, I mean, you, you try to have, you know, no intake of alcohol during pregnancy. Uh, you know, alcohol kills brain cells. Uh -huh. uh, it, ha it has a very adverse toxic mm -hmm. effect. It's just that, you know, our bodies are able to compensate for the damage that we do to it. Um, but yes, you don't want any alcohol during pregnancy if and, possible. And it's a lot of research is going on about the effects of alcohol yeah. and, and the alcohol syndrome and and we need to talk about that at the break because we've got to take a break right now we'll be back in just a minute and continue this conversation stay tuned west texas view will be right back 